All right, guys, welcome to our weekly um, Amazon for Beginners training. And I really appreciate you guys for being here tonight and joining my training. So for this week's training, I'm going to answer a lot of questions that you guys have. So I have a list of questions from the group, from our school group. Um, I'm going to address those questions before we start. And then if you guys have, have any more questions, you know, just, free, just, um, just let me know. And then I guess towards the end, I can do a little bit of product research. Sounds good? Hey, Natalie, nice seeing you. All right, sounds good. I guess able to see the screen? Do you guys see it? Let's see. You guys can see it, right? The screen? Just making sure. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. So here are the questions from the group. Right. So I just basically just went through all, all the questions here in their group. And I put them on one sheet and that way it's it's just organized. So I'm just gonna go down the list. And then if you guys have more questions about anything. Um, you'll let me know in the chat or you can unmute yourself, right? So here's the first question in the group. So I'm not sure who asked this, but has a lot of the software changed or are you still using the same resources? So, man, I started selling on Amazon in 2020. So it's been close to four years. So yes, um, the software has changed, but to keep it simple, I'm using SellerAmp, Keepa, and IP Alert right now as my main software. So I use Seller App and Keepa for my product research and I use IP Alert to protect myself from possible IP complaints. So IP is intellectual property complaints. So sometimes certain brands um, are not allowed to be sold on Amazon. So I use this software to catch those products or, or catch those brands. So second question is, hey, Louis, what's um, a complete process of product research. So I just pulled up four different products here. So I'm going to do, um, do it later. And this person is asking how to find suppliers and how to negotiate the best price. So with this model that I'm doing, um, my suppliers are retailers. So I'll give you some examples. So, so retailers meaning buytocost.com. I use Walmart too. Walmart. Um, the um this website I use Home Depot I use smaller like online stores I use you know like like bigger ones too like Lowe's Target so I use different retailers as my suppliers so I think this this person is really pertaining to wholesale I don't really do much wholesale so I don't negotiate the price so with this model what I do is I use Cashback websites like Rakuten, um, Top Cashback, Honey, Capital One Shopping, um, and I, and I also use credit cards who give me rewards. Uh, I also use gift cards to give me um, discounts, right? So I don't really negotiate the price per se, but I use different ways to lower my prices. Make sense? And then next question is, how do you, I think this is JC, right, JC? So how about the replan model on a limited budget? So, man, what I tell people is, is that just come up with a budget. So budget is going to be up to you, right? It's going to, it, it can be, you know, a thousand a month, 3,000 a month, 2,000 a month, 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month. Like that's really up to the person. So I say, I would just stick to a budget. Right. So let's say your budget is two thousand a month, right? For inventory. So I would just stick to the budget, stick to that number. And as long as you're buying products, there's always gonna be a replens, right? So replen means hot selling products. So as you buy products, you guys are gonna come up with a list of hot selling products. And once you find a list of hot selling products, all you guys have to do is keep buying it. And that's why it's called replen, because replen means replenishables. The thing is, you're not going to find those products unless you keep buying, right? Does that make sense? 
Um, the way to find these these hot selling products is to do test buys. So again, if you, if you have a budget of two thousand, right? I would spend a lot of that money and do test buys, and then at some point, um, you're gonna be able to buy two thousand dollars worth of products that are hot sellers. Does that make sense, JC? It's kind of yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so I would build your list of hot selling products. And and and, all, and you know and the only way to find those hot sellers is is just to keep testing it right, testing products. So, next question is: You guys sell branded items for FBA? So yes, we sell branded products on Amazon. So for example, this one's a popular product, right? Birds and Bees or Birds and Bees. So this one's a popular product. We sell this one. I mean, this one I haven't heard. But this one is is also a big a big brand. Mrs. Myers is a big brand, so yes, we sell this um this brand. I mean, this company is a big one too, right? Reveal. This one, what is this? It's out of stock. But RX Nuts. I'm not sure if this is popular or not, but yeah. So yes, yeah, to answer the question. Yes, we do sell branded items on Amazon FBA. So some some products you can't really sell as a new seller. So for example, Nike, Adidas, Legos are the top popular brands that people sell on Amazon. So for those products, you need to be ungated, which means you need to provide Amazon with um, like receipt of purchase for you to be able to sell the brand. Or to keep it more simple, you need to apply to sell the brand with Amazon. And once they give you the permission, you can sell those brands. But for the most part, as new sellers, you can sell a lot of big name brands. So there's another question in the group. So I think this is for, I forgot his name. But he, he was really asking for numbers, right? So, so I tell people, typically people make about 20, 30% ROI after all the fees. So fees meaning Amazon fees, prep fees, you know, if you have VA software cost. So I added here. So um Amazon sellers usually make around let's, let's just be conservative, right? 20% to 30% ROI after fees. And it and I, and I know this because I work with a lot of Amazon sellers and, and I always see this number. So it's usually between 20% to like 30%. I mean, this one's kind of higher. So, I mean, what does that mean, right? As far as like mathematics or math. So, so for this example, this seller sold $6,982 worth of inventory, right? And this person made $2,500 from this amount, which gives you a 36% ROI, right? So, I mean, these numbers matter too, but to keep it simple, I usually look at my my cost because these numbers I can really control, right? Like I can really control my sales, I can really control my margins, but I can control my cost. So, yeah, so the way I look at it is I set a monthly budget and then I know in my, you know, I know based on data that I'm going to make 20, 30% ROI, right? So let's say in January, I spent $10,000, right? In, in inventory. So I just know in my mind that when my products sell out, I would be making 20, 30% ROI, which is, which is 2000 to $3,000 profit. Make sense? Hey, Lou, can I ask a question on that? What's up, Jerry? Hey. I see, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I said maybe I'm a uh, I miss I'm missing a, a spot here, but I'm looking uh -huh. at the revenue, the profit, and the cost. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, there's some the math ain't math, and there's some numbers I'm missing. Okay, because the cost is sixty nine, but the revenue is thirteen. So where's the other? Mm. Oh, you mean uh, the fees? Is that what it is? Because the profit is twenty five, so I'm like, shouldn't there be another three thousand in there somewhere? Right. So, 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 um, the missing number goes to the fees. Okay. 
All right. That's yeah. what I was thinking, but I was like, I wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, this thing is pretty confusing, right? Like all these numbers are always like tossed around the internet, right? Low a profit margins, ROI, revenue, profit, but no one really talks about it. So yeah, because you and like I have talked about that before, the Amazon fees, and and I feel like a lot of that is missing in the online information. Some right. some people have it, but it's like, yeah, there's some fees in there that Amazon throws in that you gotta count into. Yeah, people like to flex the sales, right? <laughs> right. But no one really talks about like, well, how much you're really making then. Like it, it's very, very it's very misleading. So I usually like to talk about how much did you spend and how much did you make. Because all these numbers don't really matter, right? It's just, it's just good for flexing, honestly. Right. But at the end of the day, it doesn't pay your bills. So um, I usually just look at this number, the, the cost, meaning my, my my monthly budget. And then I like ROI because it's pretty predictable. So ROI is usually between 20 and 30%. It doesn't really change much, right? So if you spent $20,000, right? Let's say JC spent $20,000 in February, right? Um, if you make 25% ROI, it means you made $5,000 in profit. Right. It's very predictable versus saying, oh, I, you know, I sold, you know, like $37,000 in sales. Okay, well, how much did you make? <laughs> right. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. And that's why I, I, um, I like to preach like having a monthly budget because it's very, um, it's very predictable. It's very scalable too, right? So... Make sense? Yes, sir. All right, next one. So those are the fees and ROI, okay. So explain the leaderboards. Okay, so, so leaderboards. So people are asking me about the leaderboards too, right? So leaderboards, I mean, it's just a school feature where you hit, when you hit a certain level, right, in a group, you get like rewards. So school, has this feature to like just um they like to gamify you know or or make this fun right so for example JC hits level five right he gets access to this list and let's say Jerry hits level six right on our group um he gets a free call with me so is this really incentive for you guys to engage so engage meaning leave a comment you know like 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 those things and and just engage with people, talk to people inside the group. And I think this is a good feature because it keeps people entertained, right? Because <laughs> learning can be boring. So if, if there's like a game within learning, it's it's very it, it makes it fun. So yeah. So I, you know, I gave you guys like little, I guess, rewards here. And all you guys have to really do is just to like, I like the post, you know, the, um like stuff in the group, comment, ask questions, and just engage. That's really it. Let's see. And then number seven is product research examples, which I'm gonna go through in a in a, in a few minutes. So um let's see. So Tony's asking, is the leaderboard automated or do you personally approve new levels? No, this is automatic. Yeah, I don't know how the algorithm works, but but as you engage, you just level up like um, like a video game, right? <laughs> and then you keep moving up this list. And then once you hit a certain level, you get rewarded with a certain, um, I guess, like, I don't know, um, rewards, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. So Jerry said, as you engage, you have a certain number of points, you get to the next level. Yes. So. Any other questions? No questions, guys? <laughs> no? Let's see. If there's no questions, I can show some examples of product research. Sounds good. All right. So I'll do some product research examples. And if you guys have any questions, just type in the chat or unmute yourself. So 
All right. So this is a common question too with Amazon. So how do you pick the right product, right? Well, the answer is we look at data. So hold on, Liz has a question. So the retailers you buy in bulk and ship to Amazon for FBA. No, so so here's my process, right? I usually look look um look for products. I look at data, and just for example, I like this product right here, right? This this body wash from Vitacost.com. So now what I do is I do a test buy. So I usually buy around five to ten pieces per product, right? So I buy ten of these. So first I run my numbers. I go to seller app and keeper. I run my numbers, and if I like it, I buy five or ten pieces. I ship it to a third party prep center. They pack and prep their products, and they ship it to Amazon. Right, like that's an automated way of doing it. Um, the other way of doing it is you buy the product, you ship it to yourself or it's your house. You pack and prep it yourself, and you ship it to Amazon. And some people go to the stores too. So some people go to Walmart. In in person, um, let's say this one, right? This product, it's sold out. But let's say this product, where is it? Sorry, this one. So let's say this product, they go to Walmart or Target or Home Depot or yeah. So they usually go to Walmart in person. They buy like ten pieces of this product. They pack and prep it and ship it to Amazon. So. So Liz has another question. So Liz is asking, what is the average prep and pack cost per item? Man, so let me see. I want to say like a dollar to like a dollar fifty per piece. So the reason why I'm using a prep center is because it's, it saves me a lot of time. The problem with packing yourself is, is that it takes a lot of time, right? So if it took you let's say two hours to pack your inventory. Um, now, you, like now you need to add the cost of your time to the um, to the product or, or to the um, prep. And plus, I don't think it's really scalable too because a lot of people are busy. So I used to pack and prep myself in the past and I realized, man, there's no way to pack and prep for uh, for most people and, and, and me too because I have kids, you know, I'm, I'm running a business. It's not scalable. You need a storage too, right? Because at five thousand dollars in inventory, our living room became a warehouse. That's only at five thousand dollars, right? So, I'm not sure that um, I'm not saying it doesn't work. It works, but I think it's more scalable if you have a prep center. So, um, and Tony's asking, can you give examples of third party companies that back and ship the products for you? Okay, um, I forgot the website. I posted in a group. I forgot the website, but there's a website and there's a list of different prep centers. And and you guys can pick one of the ones that you like. So okay. So product research. So what I usually do is I look for products, right? So products, man, there's many ways. If there's many way to find products, you can do your own uh, product research. You can get into leads lists. You can get into VAs. So there's many ways to look for products. But once you find products, it looks like this, right? So I usually compare them side by side. And then I usually look if, if they match. So I usually look at the photos, the title, description. It's just like grocery shopping. So you, you look at different um, variables of the product. And see if they match and then from here i usually get the cost and then i plug in the sales so this one is 20 percent off 40. so this one's giving a 20 percent off right right here so now i'm going to plug this cost on seller in so 13 and then i'm going to plug in the, the discount which is 20 percent right here and then I usually look at the ROI in sales per month so for this one this one needs an extra step because it's it's a variation variation meaning 
um, same product with different flavors and different variations, right? So for example, this one, I think it has four variations. So chocolate and peppermint and then different sizes. So the way to calculate the exact sales per month is to go to variations here and check. So this one is saying this variation is getting 100% of the sales, right? That's so new, meaning, isn't it, Lou? Yeah. I thought meaning, so. So meaning this product is getting a thousand and like 900 sales a month. And then from here, we usually look at other sellers. Looks good. It looks it looks actually it looks really good actually. It's making me suspicious. <laughs> um and then I usually look at the keeper chart. Um I look at different variables here too. So I usually look at the buy box price, right? The buy box price is a pink line here. And then I usually look at the other sellers. Yeah, I'm not gonna go too deep because I don't want I don't want to confuse you guys. So I'll just stick with the main data points, which is usually sales per month, right? ROI. So this product, if you buy it, right, it's gonna give you a 47% ROI. This product is selling a thousand nine hundred times a month. And the sales are shared by these other sellers. And then from here, you decide if you like their product or not based on the data. And let's say Liz likes the product, right? Now Liz would go back to the, to the website. There's a price website. Um, she would buy 10 and she would send it to, to Amazon and do a test buy. If it does good on Amazon, Liz would buy more of it later on. If it doesn't, which I think it, it would do good based on the data. If it does good, you buy more. If not, you just leave it there. Right? Make sense? Uh, let's see. Hey, Lewis. Who's that? Hey, bro. <clears throat> did you ever get a website what that... Mm -hmm. Did you ever get a website that restrict you to quantity that you can buy? Because a lot of time after I buy for a while, a lot of websites will restrict me. Um, mm. Like, you know, especially on the popular retail sites. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. You mean like when you, when you like rebuy it, right? Yeah, like the first time I'll buy like testing out, like, you know, maybe I'll buy eight units or something like that. And then I find out a good item. The next time I'm like, okay, I need 40. And they're like, no, you cannot buy 40. So there's so many tricks you can do. Like you can do VPNs, mm -hmm. you can change address, get a new email account and stuff like that. But it just seems like I got to go around it. And that's the reason why I, I kind of stopped doing the retail, mm -hmm. retail arbitrage, just because it's so tedious. I got to go here and there. I mean, it's a great, great make, make money, but it's, it's so, it's so much like so many, you know, blocks you got to go through, you know? Yeah. Um, like the way I deal with it is I if I can order it, I just move on to the next product. Yeah. Yeah. So I usually go for the low hanging fruits, you know? <laughs> sure. And just buy what I can. That's easy to buy. If it's giving me so much trouble, I I, I just keep it. Yeah. So I usually play the numbers game. I just get like a lot of leads for my VAs. Um I pick the best ones that I like from the list and I just buy all of them. Yeah. Did you ever um do you ever what was my question? Shit. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, sorry. You, you forgot it or oh, did you ever mm -hmm. consider doing um FBM as well? Like do you ever keep FBM. some product and, and, and try to figure out 
like sometimes I'll try to figure out how to send out FBM and mm. do you ever like order from somebody else and see what their package looks like FBM mm. and then then you duplicate that? No, I just have no time to do FBM. Okay. Yeah, I just like there's different ways to do it, right? Um, I just prefer for my business to be automated. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean. I'm trying to get there, but you have to make sure you get the income to get there because I got to yeah. make sure I have enough ASIN to support that. I mean, mm. I would love to get a VA. I would love to get a prep center, but I got to make sure all my, I got to get enough AS ASINs and get enough profit mm. margin to support that. Right. So yeah. to make sure that the prep center costs can be, can be, can be recouped. Right. Yeah. I mean, FEM is a good, safe way to like test products yeah if you have that time to go to the post office you know you can right right and yeah. and also also i can if i ship out just once a day i just ship out in the morning but also it's like it's like um if i don't sell it i can always return it yeah you know because i have the inventory at, at, at home so it's a good way to test it you know once i test it and i can say okay then i'm going to start doing fba and maybe i'll ship to prep centers uh, you have a list of a prep centers, right? Yeah. There's okay. a website. Yeah. I'll post it in the group. Okay, cool. Yeah. I can't remember right now. I think prep center. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, if, if you can handle FBM, you can. It's a good way to test products for sure. Yeah. And that way you can see the product physically, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you're doing FBM, you wouldn't have prep center costs because you're fulfilling it yourself and sending it to Amazon. Right. Right. Yeah, it's just so for testing. Be, yeah. It, it's more for testing products. So so I have I have a few items that that I know and sometimes I sell quite a bit. And so and helps that, especially when you have competition. It's cause sometimes the, the, the buy boss rotates whatever you're closer and people will 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 pay for it. So it just all depends. So FBA doesn't really hurt anything because I, I still have FBA in the inventory. I just have few few items at home that if somebody order FBM I can I can ship it out. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean I think they all work. You know, FBM, FBA, prep center, packing yourself. I mean I I know people who, who own warehouses, right? So they all work. Um but I would pick one strategy that works for you too. So yeah, that's yeah. what I um, usually tell people. Like, I don't see like a mom of three, you know, like they're doing FBM just because it's, um, it, it takes a lot of time. So, so I would do a strategy that works depending on your, on your situation. So like for me, um, I just hate packing and prepping to be honest. <laughs> I don't think it's scalable, so I don't want to do it. And I think most people are, are are busy too anyway. So, and that's why I think having a prep center, you know, really helps a lot. So, makes sense. Yeah, I think I think the beginning is the hardest because you're you're trying to you're constantly trying to testing products. So, you try to send a box, and you try to you try to play Tetris, and you try to fit everything in one box. And yeah. you try to keep a keep a track of it. And then my experience that once you find a good product, sometimes you can't replay anymore. So you only get, you know, that one time, you know. So I mean that's just my experience. Sometimes I couldn't find it, or you couldn't get it on sale anymore, or something like that. Then your profit is, is gone. So that's my experience. Right. Yeah, it changes. So yeah, not all replays you can buy again. Like some are gonna be different, right? Like some are gonna be out of stock. Some are gonna be, um, price would change, right? So I would just buy stuff that I can buy. Yeah, right. that's what I usually do. So let's see. Then John is asking when you ship it to the prep center, what is the refund policy for test products, and when you buy in bulk? Refund policy, um. Well, you can't really, what do you mean like by a refund policy? So once we buy it, so, so so we buy it, right? We buy it, we ship it to their prep center, they pack and prep it, they ship it to Amazon. At that point, there's no more turning back. 
at that point you just leave your products at Amazon and you see how the reviews. Yeah. And see how good it does. But I'm not really worried because once you know product research, right? If you know how to read data, you um you can almost predict what's gonna happen. And that's why like reading the data is very important because if you really know how to read this stuff, it's almost like you, you um you can predict what's gonna happen. Yeah. And the refund policy is going to be more on the supplier that you get the product from. Right. So like on this side with Vitacost, that's who you're going to be wanting to concentrate on what their, their refund policy is if the product doesn't move. Right. Yeah. So like refund right. policy, it depends per company. It's usually like 30 days or less. Right. So, uh, you know, as soon as you buy it and you send it to Amazon... That's it, you know? And that's why JC's saying if you can do FBM, it gives you like enough time to like test it. Yeah. That's kind of advanced, so right, JC? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, I just 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 the way for me to save money, right? So so because I I have experience, I send a bunch of stuff in, it doesn't sell, because I didn't do my part of research, right? Then I have to like ship it back to me. Then I had to figure out how to like return they get a refund or or sell them on eBay really cheap to recoup my costs and stuff like that. So so I figure, you know, if I find some items, I can test them out, uh send an FBM. I mean, you're you're competing with you're competing with FBA, you're competing with the next day shipping. So you gotta make sure my, my FBA and shipping is zero day prep. So I can send out right away. So I send out I always send out the next day zero day prep. So right. And try to make the price compatible. So because because I can figure out the milling cost. That's the biggest thing for me. If I send FBM, what's the milling cost, right? Because yeah, not everything is suitable for FBM. So all this thing you gotta think ahead of time before you like, okay, let me try FBM. You know, yeah. one of the advantage of FBA is like you don't have to worry about the shipping costs and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, and everything has a cost too, because you because your time has has a cost too, right? So if it took you a, a, an hour to prep, how much do you um do you pay yourself? If you pay yourself exactly. fifty dollars per hour, I mean you you just spend fifty dollars plus the prep cost, right? To prep yeah. like units. So yeah, I I don't do I I don't I don't do FBM with stuff like that. I do FBM with like like just 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 one bag, one sticker, boom, it's gone. It's like you know just easy stuff. So yeah, you're right. I mean a lot of a lot of people don't, they think they can save a few dollars, but it takes so much more time to prep it and ship it out. So yeah, you want to, you want to pick, you want to pick your battles. Hey, can you answer John's second question? How can you bring traffic toward your store so mm. they can buy if you have no reviews? So with this model, we don't do any traffic. Amazon gives us the traffic. So we usually look at this data right here. Sales per month. Right here. And that's why I like this model because I don't do any ads. I hate ads. <laughs> like I prefer to sell products that are selling on Amazon already and I can read the data and there's traffic already. Like this, this data means traffic, right? These are, it means 1,982 people bought this product last month based on data. So yeah, I don't do any ads. That's why I like it. It's really simple to me because I used to do Shopify. I used to do, you know, other marketplaces and, and I have to do Facebook ads and there's a cost to that too, right? Speaking of cost. So, so yeah, no ads. Let's see. Any more questions? Daniela asked as a brand new seller, what category would you start in? Oh, I don't see it. Let's see. Where is that? Yeah, it's kind of a little bit further up. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Daniela. So as a brand new seller, what category would you start in? Man, um, so I tell new sellers to sell whatever you can sell as a new seller. Like, like I don't really stick to any categories like groceries or shoes or clothes. Like I don't, I'm not a um, I'm not the type of seller. I like it simple. So I sell um so if you're new, if you're a new seller, I would say, hey, just sell whatever you can sell, right? 
I don't care about the categories. I don't care about anything. I only care about the data, right? So I look at the data. And if I can sell it, I would sell it. Yeah. And and even now, as an um after selling for four years, I still have the same strategy. I just I just like it easy and simple. Because to me, easy and easy and simple is scalable. So I just sell whatever I can. And if one supplier is giving me issues, I just kept you know, I I skip the product. So See, are there any more questions that I missed? All right. Hey, Lou, I got to step out. Hi, Jerry. But I appreciate you, sir. Yeah, thanks for coming, bro. Appreciate you. Right. Have a good night, everybody. Let's see. So John is asking how much is a good amount to start? Um, Man, I, I, I tell people start with a few hundred dollars and work your way up. And the reason is, I don't want to give you a number to say, oh, start with 5,000, right? And then you just buy like $5,000 worth of products and, and and you don't do good. So I tell people start with whatever you have and, and just keep building your store. So I usually say start with a few hundred dollars and keep working your way up. Yeah. All right. So back to product research. So yeah, I usually look at the supplier website and the Amazon website right there. And then I plug in the cost, right? So this one is 729. I look for any sales. Oh, any sales. Let's see any sales. So 729. And this one is giving me a 40% ROI, 157 sales a month. This one is a variation. It says V right there. So I would look for the exact sales per month of this variation. So again, I go down to variation. I pick the variation, which is this one. Then click check. So this variation is selling, it's taking 32% of the sales. So we're going to do a little math, right? <laughs> so 157 sales a month times 32%. So this exact variation is selling at 50 times a month. It's giving me 40% ROI. So now I look at other sellers. And then I decide, so can I share 50 sales a month with these two other sellers who has this much in inventory? Make sense? So I usually look at supply and demand, right? So again, the product is selling at 50 times a month. Now I ask myself, am I going to be able to share or, or do I want to share these sales with these other sellers? And to me, that's a good ratio, right? So 50 sales a month, there's only two sellers with only three in, in inventory. Make sense? And then if you want to go deeper, you can go to the, um, the Keepa chart and you can nerd out, you know? Honestly, you can nerd out with this. <laughs> there's so many data here that you can look at, but I'm going to keep this like very beginner friendly. So um, the main data points that I like to look at, you know, I, I, I plug in the cost, I plug in the Amazon price. I usually look at the ROI, the sales per month. And then I look at the competition. And then I decide if I want to, you know, if, if, if I think I can share the sales with other sellers. And then later on, if you guys want to go like keep up, we can. <laughs> so <clears throat> see so natalie is asking um how a few hundred dollars on one product so, so no so a few hundred dollars on different products and i like to do that because i want to spread my risk i don't want to put so much money on, on one product so if i have five thousand dollars i would spend that on 
many products, right? And then Abu Bakar is asking, what's the difference between a retail website and a distributor? So retail websites are websites like Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Lowe's, right? Um, Vitacos, Best Buy. So, and there's also a lot of online smaller retailers. So the difference between a retail website and a distributor is with distributors, you need to buy in bulk. Meaning, let's say this one, right? Let's say you found a Burt's B distributor. They usually have an MOQ, which is a minimum order. So, so now you can't just order 10, you need to order, you know, let's say like a hundred pieces. So with distributors, you gotta buy in bulk. With, with retailers, you can buy in small quantities. And that's why I like working with retailers because you can, um, it's because you can do a test buy, right? You know, you're not risking so much money on one product. You can do a test buy, see if it does good. If it does good, you buy more of it. Let's see. So this one is an advanced question from Abu Bakar again. Do we go with a listing that has a suppressed buy box? Yes. Yeah, that one's not for beginners, but let me see if it's an example. Okay, this one. So this one has, so this one is a product with no buy box. So it, it means it's suppressed. Um, so yes, but to answer your question, yes. If there's no buy box, I still buy it based on the data, right? Because even if it's suppressed, it's still selling at four to four times a month. So as long as the data is good, yes, I would still buy it. My baby's screaming outside. <laughs> questions? Any more questions? Yeah, I'll just keep going with product research. Um, so next product, Mrs. Myers body wash. So again, you, you check if they match, right? You look, you look at the photos, title, description, flavor, um, looks the same. And then you plug in the cost. So this one's eight seventy nine, And then look for discount codes if, if there's any. This one doesn't. Yeah, this one doesn't. So eight seventy nine, right? So plug in the cost, eight seventy nine. Um, plug in your sales price, Amazon selling price. And then from here you run your numbers. So for this product, you're getting a 49% ROI. It's selling at 100 times a month. And again, it's a variation, right? So now we got to go deeper. So you go to variations. You click the variation. You click on check. And then for this one, so this variation is selling at 64%, meaning we need to calculate 64% of this number, which is about 64 sales a month, right? So now we have the exact sales per month of this variation. So now you go down below and look at the competition and decide, hey, do I really want to say um, share 64 sales a month with these other sellers with this much inventory? Would you guys do it? So 64 sales a month shared with these other sellers with this much inventory. Do you guys like that ratio? Would you guys buy it? <laughs> no, it's a cute. Let's see, let's see the chat. So for who's to say yes, it, right? Yeah, I agree. It's um, Abu Bakar is a yes. Uh -huh. I agree. Right, it's a good ratio. So 64 sales a month shared by four sellers with this much inventory. Right? I think I think it's a pretty good ratio. And then keep a yeah, keep us good. Let's see, let's see the chat. So Abubakar said it's less 
Competitive listing. Yes, I agree. So Liz is asking, are you paying sales tax on these retail items? Um, I'm not because I'm using a tax-free prep center. So uh, I'm not paying any sales tax. It's amazing, right? <laughs> so Abubakar is saying, can we do FBA or FBM? Um, what do you mean exactly? So, I mean, you can do FBA or FBM. It's going to be up to you, right? If, if you want to do FBM, you can. If you do, if you want to do FBA, you do FBA. So FBA means fulfilled by Amazon, meaning you send their products to Amazon. Amazon fulfills the products for you, right? FBA means fulfilled by merchant, which means the merchant, meaning you, you're going to have to, to fulfill the order. So I usually do FBA because um, I like it automated. So, man, I don't want to spend a lot of time on my business. Like, I'm really heavy on freedom. I, you know, I got kids. I like to travel. You know what I mean? I just saw um, a label last night. <laughs> we were hanging out. So, or uh, I'm sorry, um, two nights ago, I, I, um, I saw Jerry too. So to me, I like to live. I'm not saying I'm lazy, but man, if I can build a business and have a lot of time and make money, I mean, I, you know, that's what I want, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So Liz is asking, do you need a tax exam certificate per state since Amazon can sell anywhere? No, we don't. Yeah, if you find a tax free prep center, you don't need any of these. Yeah, these are information that YouTubers like to like we'll talk about on their YouTube channel. But if you know the right place, it's going to be so much easier. It sounds so simple, right? <laughs> like, honestly, guys, it's so simple that people don't want to believe it because it's so simple. But really, if you build a simple business, you know, it, it works the best. So Javier is asking, have you ever used Buy Bot Pro? No. What is that? I don't know what that is, but yeah. Okay, let's keep going with the products. Man, this one is sold out though. So this one is sold out on Walmart, right? So obviously we can't look at the data for this one. So this one we skip. Here, let me close these tabs by the way. Oh man, what happened to the I lost the source. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Questions? So Daniela is asking, does Vita 360 cost to use? Um, oh, Bybot, Bybot Pro is like, they say it's better than selling. Oh, well, I don't use it, but if, I mean, if, if you like it, use it. The thing about this product we should offer is there's a lot of them, right? There's Helium 10, there's Jungle Scout. Um, I used to do, I used to use um, Rev Seller. Um, yeah, there's a lot of softwares out there. But I'm just going to talk about the softwares that I personally use, right? Because I like them. So, but yeah, if I mean, if you want to use Vibot, probably you can. So does Vita 360 cost to use? No, it's free. It's a free website. It, um, it's just a retailer. So you just buy it from this website, ship it to yourself, you ship it to your prep center, and that's it. Um, another questions. Oh, a membership. Oh, okay. Yeah, some websites have. You know, like you need to have a membership, like Costco, right? Costco, Sam's Club, um, what's the other one? Webstaurant. Yeah. Like some stores have membership um plans, but most but most don't. So if you don't want to pay for membership, I mean there's a lot of like popular websites like Kohl's. Kohl's is a good source. Um, that's free. Um, what else? Mm, I can't think of right now, but 
Um, Sephora. Sephora is good. Um, yeah, I I can go deep with this. You, um, you can even go to Rakuten.com. And then you can source from all these websites if you want. I mean, PetSmart is good. Macy's is good. Carter's is good. Um, let's see. I mean, I mean, Lego's a popular one. Dyson, I've sold some Dysons in the past. Adidas is a popular one. CVS is good. Lowe's, I mean, Instacart is good too, if you know how to use it. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of websites. Zazora was good too. Yeah. So many sources. Um, having all that time free on your hands, your VA do the product research, and then you decide how much you want in your store. Yes. So, yeah, my business is pretty automated. So I have a team of VAs looking for products. Um, I usually pick products on their list, and then I send it to my other VA who does the ordering. She orders my products, and then she does my bookkeeping. So it doesn't have to start like that. I started from the bottom up. I started with packing and prepping my own products in the beginning. And then I tried to scale and then I realized, oh, it's not scalable. And then and then I had to look for a prep center. And then I, um, I had to learn how to um, look for VAs. I built my VA team. And then now it's pretty automated. So. Natalie's asking, will this be on replay? Yes. I'm going to post a replay in the group. So how much do you have to generate a month to profit on autopilot? I mean, I mean, you just got to run your numbers. So let me see. 5,000 a month. Uh, I mean, if you if, let's see. So at 5,000 a month, you should be generating about 1,000 or 1,500, right? I want to say at least 5,000 a month in, in spend. You should be able to hire a virtual assistant to help you automate stuff. Yeah, I want to say 5,000 is a minimum number based on ROI. So at 5,000, you make about 1,000, 1,500, so 2,000, yeah. So, I, so I'll say if you have at least 5,000 a month, you can semi-automate the business for sure. And Daniela's is asking, I've seen some that cost a membership to shop on there. Yes. So, yeah, some, some websites you got to spend for like a membership fee and some are free. So if you don't want to, you know, in, in the beginning, right, of course, you're not going to spend 100 a month just to shop on a certain website. So I would just keep that website. And I would look for websites that are free, which there's a lot of them. Right. Uh, you know, PetSmart, Macy's, Target, Kohl's, Carter's, these are all free websites to do product research, you know. Office Depot, Skechers, Crocs, Dyson, Lego. And you can also go to physical stores if you want to, right? And they're all free. You know, you just walk in the store and look for products. So let's see. I love the questions, by the way, guys. So Liz is asking, what do you spend money on? Oh, well, in the beginning, you don't spend much because it's, it's going to be you running the business, right? And learning it. So software. So keep us 20 bucks. Seller Amp is 20 bucks. Amazon Seller Central is about 40 bucks. So those are the main softwares that you need. How much is that? 40, 20. So it's 80 bucks a month as a beginner. And then of course, as you scale, you're you're gonna need more stuff, right? So as you scale, you 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 probably hire your first VA. Your first VA would be four dollars per hour. So a part-time VA would be like three fifty a month. And as you grow, you're gonna grow your team too, right? So, and prep cost. So prep cost is usually about a dollar. It's only like a dollar fifty. But I don't, you know, it's a cost. But once you sell that product, it covers it though. So. Um, the thing about seller amp is that I forgot to tell you guys about this, but so here, right? There's a, there's an option here, the settings option. 
And I usually plug in my cost for my, so my prep right here, here my, I put $2.65 for my prep cost. And then this one is 0%. But for people, so, so let's say you live in California, right? How, I think, so if you live in California, you're going to be paying about, a nine, um, I think like 10%, 9%. How much is sales tax right now, bro? In California. I think 9%. So you, you here in Seller Amp, you can plug in your cost, right? And that way, when you do your product research, you're getting a good ROI after all the cost. Make sense? So for this example, so for this example, right? So for this example, you're getting an 18% ROI after all the cost, Amazon fees, prep fees, and taxes. Make sense? So, so, so before you buy anything, you know the exact numbers already. Make sense? So you, you, you plug in your sales tax here, you plug in your prep cost, you plug in all the costs on seller amp before you do product research. And that way, you're, you're getting a clean ROI, right? So, um, any more questions you guys? Was that helpful? So Daniela is asking, I would like to figure out some of the verbiage on seller app next time. Okay. We can go through it on our next call. Liz said, Liz said very, yeah. I mean, I just showed you guys the basics because I don't want to confuse you guys, right? Because data, I mean, I mean, we can go through like data, like all day if you want. But if you don't understand the basics, like, it, you know, it's not going to make sense. So for these calls, I kind of want to keep it just basic because even with the basic data, you so you guys can still make money, right? I feel like if I go too deep, I'm going to confuse you guys because really there's so much data here. If you're a nerd, you probably like this stuff. But if you, you know, if you just want to make money, honestly, as long as you get the basics, you're good. Because data is very confusing if you go way too deep, right? I mean, look at all these num uh, numbers here. You guys under, you know, <laughs> so many numbers, right? So to keep it simple, you know, I, I like to look at the sales per month, ROI, competition, and just a basic, basic keep a chart. And that's it. So, but yeah, for our next Zoom, I can, I can show more information about you know, other data sets, like all of these and yeah, all that. So Let's see. Um, so Natalie said good information. Need to learn more. LAO said got here a little late, but yes, very helpful so far. We will, I'll watch a replay. And Daniela said, thank you. All righty, guys. We good for uh, for tonight? Good for now? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Thanks. All guys. I'll see you guys next week, okay? All right. If you guys All have right. any questions, type it in the chat. I mean, in the chat, I'm sorry. In the, in our school group. So. Hey, don't forget to shit that prep uh Prep Center lives. Okay. Cool. Right, man. Guys. Thanks. See you guys soon. Thanks. Bye bye.